Just very quickly, it's the Zohar of Allah subhanahu wa Again, wal kitab al mubin inna ja'alnahu qur'anan arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun innahu fi umm al kitab ladayn al-alayn al-hakim afadadribu ankum al-dhikra sahhan ankum tum qawmu musrikun qawmu musrikin They say, you know, Allah said, afadadribu ankum al-dhikra Do you think we're going to stop reminding you? We're going to stop sending our messenger or our messenger will stop functioning as a messenger because you don't want him to. You think we're going to stop, have the Prophet stop reminding you, doing his job? No. You are a people that's extravagant, you cross all bounds and because of that you're wishing the Prophet stop his message. Okay? So the same thing that's mentioned in Surah Zuhra is being mentioned here. We have to send our warning. Allah says this dhikr is not going to stop. Because you know what is happening is the Prophet is reminding them, the Prophet's teaching them, the Prophet's going after them. He's like even pleading them, right? He feels sorry for them. So they're saying, look, please Muhammad, stop. Don't, don't tell us. You know, you, you, you tell us of a punishment, bring the punishment. Don't, just stop it now. We've had enough. So Allah says, "If another one comes with dhikr, you think we're going to stop our giving you our dhikr? The dhikr is going to stop coming to you just because you say so? No, it will never be like this." Inna gunna unzidi. No, this we've been always warning. This has happened in the past. Other prophets came. Noah and Isa Tosalam came. He warned his people. They begged him, "Please stop bothering us. This this message doesn't stop. Just because you want it to stop." Okay. Fiha yufraku kullu amrin haki. In this book that has come down on this day to change history, I'll say I'll show you why I'm saying to change history in a second. Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. On that day, all the matters of Allah's wisdom, meaning the day the Quran is coming down, on that day, all the affairs are distinguished or made ready. You can say they're all made ready with Allah's wisdom. فيها يفرق كل أمر الحكيم أمر من عندنا. This is our command. This is our command from us. We have to send down this Quran. إلا أننا مسلمين. And we have been sending messengers before. Meaning, we have been sending messengers before on this لَنَطْرُ الْمُبَارَكَةَ. Which is another meaning of this ayah. Which some of the rewayat do tend to say that the books of Allah, whether it was Torah or Injil or Zubur. They all came down on the same day or the same time. This is one explanation. But Amr bin Yirindina, this is a command from us. In that we now we have we have been sending messengers of always, and we're not going to stop now. Muhammad is not going to stop warning you. He's not going to stop uh, telling you what is right. Rahmatan bin Rabbik, a mercy from your Rabb, a mercy from your Lord. In no was subunai. This is the most important. Innahu was samiyunah. Why is Allah saying Innahu was samiyunah? He hears and he knows. At one level, rahmatan min rabbik. This is specifically for the Prophet. A mercy from your Lord, right? Rahmatan min rabbik. Innahu was samiyunah because the fasad in the world that was happening, that the angels also said, "Atajalu fiha ma yufsidu fiha, wa yasfiqu dima." Are you going to shed blood? Are you going to place someone on earth that will shed blood? أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ And he will shed blood and do murder and cause fasad. أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْمُ نُسَبِّهُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ While we are praising you and glorifying you. Right? So, the fasad is happening and the Prophet is in the cave and he's praying to Allah. What is this fasad in the world? This same point has been mentioned in Surah Shura, which is two surahs. It is another Habim surah, and in that Allah puts even a very more beautiful uh, picture. Those same angels that were saying to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, "That are you going to put fasad, these people that are doing fasad in the world?" Then that picture of the current situation of the angels is taken. Allah says, "Takabu samawatu ya." Because of the facade of the world, it is as if the heavens and the earth are going to burst open. Because of the facade. And the angels, they're 
they're watching this facade and they realize, they feel like the whole universe is going to explode and they're doing, out of this, they're doing tasbih of Allah. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّهُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ doesn't mean they're asking forgiveness but asking for guidance. And forgiveness is a way of asking for guidance. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ They're asking for forgiveness for the people on the earth because the angels are watching and they feel as if the whole universe is going to break apart. Those same angels that were saying, are you going to call, bring someone there that's going to cause facade? Those same angels are now watching, they're like, oh my God, look at all this facade. And they're out of the fear that the whole universe will blow up, they're doing tasbih of Allah, tahmeed of Allah, and they're asking forgiveness from Allah for the people on earth. Get it? Huh? So, تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْ فَوْقِهِنَّ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّهُونَ بِرَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَلَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And then Allah continues to show His mercy because He is Ghafoor Rahim. So this is mentioned in the Shura. The same thing is being mentioned here by saying رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكْ One level is because Prophet Muhammad was sitting in the cave and he had some anxiety about human beings and about truth. And the Prophet was worried about humanity. So Rahmatan Rabbik. Now the answer to, from Allah has come to you through His mercy. And He is in Nahu was Samir Ali. Because He answered the prayer of the Prophet in the mountain when He was there. In Nahu was Samir Ali. So the answer to that facade is. What? In Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah says, that, uh, where the angels say, أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْبِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ Over there, the answer to that is, فَإِنَّا يَقْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا So when it comes to you, my guidance. فَإِنَّا means when. When what? When here, when. When what? When can be any time. But when can... فَإِنَّا And so as a consequence, فَ is... Fa, we call it fa sababiyah. Fa as a consequence. In that when. So as a consequence when, as a consequence when what? As a consequence of what? As a consequence to that facade. The human beings will be doing facade in the world. So Allah is saying, okay. But then I will send my guidance. And this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah sends His prophets when the people are at the highest level of the facade. This is the point that I want to raise. And I will show you the example of that in this very story. So here the Prophet is, in the time, now you know the parallel between the, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and Prophet Muhammad and Musa, they are like pairs, right? In terms of the movement aspect. So for example, they, uh, they both had hijrah, they both uh, had companions, they both had an ummah, they both had a qibla, they both had a book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they both had a sharia. Even the Prophet says, uh, Surely all those things will come to my ummah that came to Bani Israel, like two shoes of a pair. So we are very similar. Even to this point, that in the time of Musa alayhi it was the boys that were being killed. Fir'aun was killing the boys and letting the girls survive as trophies. In the time of the Prophet the facade was killing the girls. Okay? So the point is, is that there was great facade in the time of the Prophet. The richer were getting richer, the poorer were getting poorer, and the whole world was just uh, one big marketplace where it is the, the cutthroat through the survival of the of the of the the, 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 the survival of the fittest in the, in the material sense of the word. So, Rahmatam bin Rabbik, a mercy from your Lord, innahu was samiyun alim. Allah was listening to the, to the, the prayers, the, 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 the sufferings, and the torture, and the fasad that the people were going through. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to that suffering, that fasad, right? Allah responded to that by saying, okay, we will now fix the situation by sending our messenger. We will now make everything good by sending our guidance. The same thing when the angel said, are you going to place in there someone who causes fasad? So Allah says, So when my guidance comes to you, 
فمن تبع هداي فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. So this فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون going back to the fasad. So Allah is saying that there was so much fasad as in the previous surah, the angels are looking down and doing istighfar and doing tasbih of Allah that gosh, these people are doing such chaos that this universe just may explode. Then in this surah, same thing. Uh, over here it's mentioning that the other side of that which is that Allah is Samiun Alim. Allah heard the cries of the people and He heard the suffering of the people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then decided to make some great uh, event in history and the event in history was sending down this Qur'an sending down the messenger with the Qur'an now this will become more clear as we continue with the ayah okay so now with this in mind that it is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He sends the messenger of, of Allah Allah sends His messenger when people are in the peak of the facade, when they're climax of the facade, even if you look at, uh, we will look for example, the story that's going to come next is the story of Musa and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. And this is a very important point in relationship to the, the similarities of Musa with the Prophet, that the people of Bani Israel were on the brink of extinction. When you're killing all the men and letting the women survive, if this would continue, they would go into extinction. That they were on the brink of extinction and Allah saved them. How did Allah save them? By sending a messenger. How did Allah save them? By giving them the guidance. Right? So in the same way, society, societies are the, on the brink of extinction, whether it is the people of Lut They are all doing homosexuality, all doing these immoral acts. So the society is on the brink of extinction. The facade is so much. And by the way, this is a very important point. The difference between fasad and fitna. Fasad is what non-Muslims, when Allah is referring to non-Muslims, it's the fasad. Fitna is when you're on guidance, when you're on the guidance, and something will take you away from the guidance. Right? Yes. Okay. So, did the people say that we will believe and that we will not test it? Here's Fitna is for believers. This is why the Prophet said, Satakuna fitna There will be something of fitna for the Muslims. Something that will take them away from the path. So, there, the difference between fasad, fasad is what is happening without guidance. And fitna is what the corruption that takes place after having the guidance. This will become important in the coming ayah, as you will see. So, rahmatan bi rabbik inna hu huwa samiyun alim. Allah is all hearing and all knowing. Allah knows when the fasad is there so much that Allah then has to bring His guidance to the people and show the people way out of that so that they will appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance for them. Then Allah says, okay, you didn't get how important this might bring. You didn't get how big of an event this is. You know, you're begging the Prophet to stop giving you reminders. But you didn't get how big of an event this is that Allah is responding to the calls of those slaves and those female children that are dying. Allah is responding to their call. Then Allah says, okay, if you didn't get how big of a day this is, and that this is Laylatim, Laylatim Mubarakatim, not because that's a special night. No, it's a very historical day that Quran is coming down. That's why it's special. Okay? And so Allah says, if you didn't get how special this day is, or how important, how great of an event our sending the messenger is, then at least you should consider He is the Rabb of the heavens and the earth and even what is between them. If you truly have certainty. If you have, you have this word certainty at least, or if you do have certainty, There is no divine other than He. He gives life, He gives death. He is your Lord and the Lord of your Father. Now this is important because this summarizes this ayah. The entire argument in Surah Zuhr. Surah Zuhr, the main thrust of it is, you know, in Surah Zuhr, the main thrust is two things. One, why don't, uh, you know, why, why didn't uh, somebody rich become the prophet? Right? And the second is, why not one of our, why not our forefathers? What's wrong with our forefathers? Why can't we follow our forefathers? So this whole argument of our forefathers is 
Even today, people hide behind their forefathers, right? So, رَبِّ السَّوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَبَابَيْنَهُمَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُقِلِينَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّهُ هُوَ يُعْيِ وَيُمِيتْ رَبُّكُمْ وَرَبُّ آبَائِكُمُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Now, here. Conjugations in Quran are very important. I don't have time to go into it. But, but no. هُمْ فِي شَكِّنْ يَنْحَرُ They're playing in doubt. They're still playing in doubt. Even though we have sent a clear book, on this very important day, giving clear guidance to take people out of the facade, and Allah has heard the prayers of so many people, but yet they're still playing in their doubt. So then Allah says, now the topic changes a little bit, goes to the day of judgment. This is a contrast that is almost making fun of them. When the, we sent down the clear book, they didn't get it. We sent down a clear prophet, Rasulullah Mubin, is also used in the previous two surahs. Rasulullah Mubin is used in the Zuhraf. Rasulullah Mubin is also used in uh, in Surah uh, Shura, I think. So Rasulullah Mubin is also used. So here they didn't get it when they were able to see everything they're able to see, all the ayat they're able to see, the guidance they're able to see. They didn't get it. It didn't get into their brains. So then Allah is now drawing the picture when they will get it. When will they get it? In the day of judgment. How? Watch. بَلْهُمْ فِي شَكِينَ يَلْعَبُونَ فَارْتَقِبْ فَارْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَعْتِ السَّمَاءُ لِبُخَالِ مُبِينَ Then that day, wait for that day, Allah says, where you will be like in gas chambers. You know how Hitler puts the people in gas chambers. So a clear smoke will be there. Okay? And يَغْشَ النَّاسِ هَذَا أَبُ نَعِينَ It will overtake the people. Allah says, this will be the painful punishment. رَبَّنَا And they will say, رَبَّنَا أَكْشِفْ عَنَّا ذَابَ إِنَّا مُؤْمِنُونَ Then they will say, Oh Allah, remove the punishment. Please remove the punishment. We believe. Okay. Then that day, when they will be in smoke, they'll believe. This is the, you can say, when everything was clear and they're able to see everything, they didn't believe. But on that day, when they will be in gas chambers, they'll be believing. Right? And they'll be praying. Oh Allah, remove the, remove the punishment from us. We believe. Then Allah says, after mentioning the dua, رَبَّنْ أَكْشِفْ عَنَّا ذَبَّ جَحَنَّمْ أَذَابَ إِنَّا إِنَّا مُؤْمِنُونَ أَنَّ لَهُمْ ذِكْرَ وَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولُ مُبِينَ Here, this was the second one. How can there be a dhikr for them? That day where Qur'an was going to come to take them out of the oppression and out of the facade, that cannot happen now. This is now a different era. It's a different time. This is the land of justice. There's nothing to respond to now. There's nothing to respond to. Just two surahs before. So the shura, the main theme is فَاسْتَجَابُوا فَاسْتَجِيبُوا لِرَبِّكُمْ Respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger. So, أَنَّ لَهُمْ ذِكْرَ How will they be reminded now? وَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولُ مُبِينَ When the clear Prophet came, when Muhammad was there, and this is the thing, the clearness of the Prophet is not, is, is so clear because when the Prophet comes, when it's such, and this is what will happen with the Jah, the times will be so bad, Right? That when he performs his miracles and he takes people out of, he will bring the rain, bring the dead back to life. In that time of chaos, in that time of corruption, he will do the things the prophets would do. He will make himself appear like a prophet. He will make himself as obvious as it would be a prophet to come to take people out of the difficulties that they were in and to ease. Okay? So this is what, the, so just imagine this. So Allah said, Rasulullah Mubin. So if Allah is saying, Rasulullah Mubin, imagine how difficult the situation was that people would be willing to follow a strong personality like Musa. They would be willing to follow a strong personality like Musa or Ibrahim or Isa or Prophet Muhammad to take them out of this difficulty. The same thing that's mentioned again in two surahs before. شَرَعَ لَكُمْ لَدِّينِ مَا وَصَّابِهِ مُوهَا وَلَذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَمَا وَصَّابِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى أَنْ أَقِيمُ الدِّينِ وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُ فِي كَبُرَ عَلَى الْمُشْرِكِينَ مَا تَدْرُوهُمْ إِلَيْكَ This process that, you know, Nuh alayhi sallallahu sallam and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa and Prophet Muhammad, they did, that these were the worst times in history when they came into history. Worst times in history when they came into history to take people out of the darkness is into light. In the time of Isa alayhi sallallahu sallam, but the difference is, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam, the, 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 the oppression had become global. And in the time of 
the other prophets, it was local. It was local oppression, but there were still the peaks of oppression in terms of historical events. The Roman Empire, the way it had did, did, did the, 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 the punishment, or rather Allah's punishment upon the Jewish people, the Muslims of that time, the way it happened through the Roman Empire, there's no example like that in history. You know how the, Roman, the Romans treated the, uh, the Jewish people, the, the, the Jewish Muslims at that time. And then before that, uh, the time of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, what Fir'aun was doing, right? And so this is how the prophets came and took them out of the situation. So Allah says, أَنَّا لَهُمْ ذِكْرَ وَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولُ مُبِيمٍ ثُمَّ تَوَلَّهُ وَلَّوْا أَنْهُمْ وَقَالُمْ مُعِلُّمْ مَجْرُونَ Okay, but what is your, your situation from uh, today? Then you turn, you turn your backs, right? You turn your backs on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu you turn your heart from him, and you say, مُعِلَّمُنْ مَجْمُونَ You say he's a crazy teacher. What is he, you know? Now why, why love is used here, why? Because there, it is, what is being highlighted is, he's trying to go and teach the people, he's trying to go and warn the people. So مُعَلَّم is used here for that reason. مُعَلَّم مَجْمُونَ مُعَلَّم مَجْمُونَ إِنَّ كَاشِفُ الْعَذَابِ قَلِيلًا And if we were even to remove the punishment a little bit, right? This is their situation. That if we were to remove the punishment a little bit, إِنَّ كَاشِفُ الْعَذَابِ قَلِيلًا إِنَّكُمْ عَائِدُونَ You would just return back to your old behaviors, right? You're impulsive people. You have now become what you were. Meaning what you were on earth, you've become and there's no chance for you now. يَوْمَ نَبْتِشُ النَّبْشُ يَوْمَ نَبْتِشُ الْبَطْشَ تَلْكُبُرَ إِنَّا مُنْتَقِمُ That day we will grab you with the most severe, severe grab and we will take our revenge. You had your chance before, but now is the day of revenge. Okay, so now this is the introduction. The introduction is that two things. How our clear prophets came. When clear prophets came, you couldn't get it. And when you will be in Dukhan Mubin, over there's Rasul Mubin, over there's Dukhan Mubin. So when you will be in the clear smoke, when you can't see and you're all confused, you'll believe that day. You'll see it that day. Right? But when a clear prophet comes to you to guide you, tell you do justice, don't lie, don't cheat, you didn't get it. When the whole situation was all corrupt, the angels were watching and saying, oh my God, this universe is just going to explode. Right? The whole universe is going to explode. This is how the angels feel now. This is how the angels feel when they look at the good of the world. The oppression of the world, they're like, you, 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 uh, you They seek forgiveness for the people on earth because they're like, what the, you know, we say, what, what the hay is happening? What, what's going on here? How is, this is crazy what's going on. And so they're, and Allah is saying, Allah is responding to that, that yes, Allah will proclaim, Allah will send His message and His messengers. So Allah is contrasting this, the great day, where this revelation has come now to take people out of the facade of the world and how clear this is versus the disbelievers, they, it's not clear to them. Allah says, Kitab al mubin and then says, Bal, um fi shakin yal On the one side, the book is clear, Rasul is clear, but they still are playing in doubt. Okay? And the reasons for that have been given partly in the previous surahs of the Zohar, which, which is, you know, they're saying, what about our forefathers? What about, how about somebody rich? And then followers, people just follow, you know, whoever, it doesn't matter. So this traps them. So, now, this initial part that I just explained in Surah Al-Dukhan will then be further explained in this part now, this part of it. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنْ لِقَوْلَهُمْ قَوْلَ فِرْعَوْمُ وَجَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ كَرِيمٌ Just as a Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and by the way, this is also mentioned, the similarity of the situation and the similarity of the Prophet between Musa والسلام, in the time of Musa and the Fir'aun has been mentioned in many places in the Quran, but one of the most uh, clear places this has been mentioned is in Surah uh, <coughs> Muzammir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muzammir, here. We have sent a messenger to you who is a witness upon you. We've sent a messenger to you 
just as we said, Fir'aun a messenger. Because the point is, Prophet Muhammad is in the same similar situation as Musa a.s.w. was, in a sense that there's oppression all over. But in the case of Musa, it was maybe one dimensional oppression. But in the case of the Prophet وسلم, it was a multi-level oppression. It wasn't just Fir'aun and people following just this one leader, but there were many evil leaders who were conspiring together to uh, undo the Prophet So, inna arsalna, inna, you know, this inna arsalna, we have definitely sent alaykum rasulan to you a messenger, shahidun alaykum. He is a witness upon you, right? He is witnessing the same things. Kama arsalna illa fir'awna rasulan. So, over here, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنَا وَجَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ كَرِيمٌ So, we tested the people of Bani Israel. They're فَتَنَّ instead of فَتَنَّ So, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنَ So, the people of Fir'aun were tested, meaning the Muslims in there. وَجَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ كَرِيمٌ And a noble prophet came to them. What did he say? أَلْأَغْدُوا إِلَيَّ إِبَادُ just let go the servants of Allah with me. Let the Bani Israel go with me. You're oppressing them. Why are you oppressing them? You know, he wanted to remove the facade of the world. Just as the angels were seen. I am a trustworthy messenger to you. Don't try to make yourself more arrogant than Allah. إِنِّي آتِيكُمْ بِسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ I have clearly come to you with a clear... Over here is Sultan Mubin. <coughs> Over there is Rasul Mubin. And before that is Kitab Mubin. I have come to you with a clear proof. Just as Musa Alayhi had his proofs as you know. Just and like that the Prophet had come. He was as clear to the Quraysh as Musa was to Fir'aun. إِنِّي أُعِذْنُ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ أَنْ تَرْجُمُ I seek, I seek Allah's refuge. I seek my my Rabb and your Rabb's refuge that you should kill me, because what was going to happen to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu They were also going to try to kill him, right? When he went on Hijrah. So the same thing. In your to Rabbi or Rabbukum an tarjumuni wa illam tu minuli fatazimuni. If you don't believe me, just let me go. This is what Musa said. If you don't believe it, you can just let me go. Just as but uh, the surah mentions. So Musa alayhi salatu salam did dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these people, what are they? They're criminals. They're mujrim. This is the facade of the world. They have done too much oppression. They're not willing to listen to any true thing. They're not willing to be honest. They just want their, uh, they want their seats. You know, they don't want to let their power go. They don't want, you know, because for them the whole workforce, Bani Israel was their whole workforce. They don't want to let that go. So he says, uh, Those people that were being oppressed, 
they became the inheritors of the oppressors, the things of the oppressors, the gardens and all of these things. So today, the people that are oppressing you, right, the, all the things that they're making and the progress that they're making, all the progress that they're making, and the end result of all of this oppression is, you will become inheritors of that. You will become inheritors of all that progress. So the progress they're making, they're making, Fir'aun was making so much progress. And in the end, the people of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and the ummah of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, became the inheritors of that progress. So Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْرَثْنَا قَوْمًا آخِرِينَ And this is how we made the people who inherit, meaning the people of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, inherit all the, 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 the works of Fir'aun and his treasuries and the gardens and rivers and everything they make. فَمَا بَقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ So no one, when Pharaoh went, no one of the heavens and the earth cried over him, over them. No, the literal meaning is, no, the sky nor the earth cried. Nor did the sky cry, nor did the earth cry. فَمَا بَقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا كَانُوا مُنْزِنِينَ Nor is anybody waiting for them, you know, that maybe we'll meet them on the day of judgment, or nobody's being waiting for them. And we saved the people of Bani Israel from a painful and humiliating punishment. And he was, Fir'aun was trying to be, play, play God. He was trying to play high. Okay, and breaking all bounds. And uh, so, so the, 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 there's another topic that will continue after this, but the main point here is that I'm saying, that I'm trying to drive home is this point, is that this Surah Al-Mubarakah in the beginning, the first 31 ayahs, is trying to tell us what? The, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends His Messenger, it is the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His Messenger when the facade of the world reaches its peak point. This is when Allah sends the Messenger. And we can see this historically, when the facade of the world reaches really in a really bad shape. So the Prophet ﷺ is there at a time where the facade was very clear. The facade was clear and it was, people were praying, Oh God save us from this torturous world, this oppressive world. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send His messengers. And so here is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming, taking them out of the oppression teaching them the things that will take them out of the oppression. And so he becomes a Rasulul Mubin. He becomes a clear messenger. His teachings are clearly the teachings that would take people out of that oppressive stage that they're in. Just like Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, he was taking them clearly out of the oppressive state that they were in, into a state of harmony and tranquility. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, those people who after we sent this clear book, right, because this book is calling them towards that harmony, is calling them towards that tranquility. Is calling them towards remove the facade. And there's something that much can be said about Quraysh and Arabia in particular, but I'm not going to do that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after saying this, in Allah, in Inna Hu was Samir Ali, Allah listens and He knows all the things. And as mentioned even in the previous surahs, even the angels they're watching, you know, uh, what is happening in the world, the facade in the world. Even the angels are scared. The angels are scared also the universe will explode because of the disharmony and corruption that's in the world. Then Allah mentioned the story of the Day of Judgment, which is the Dukhan al -Mubin. That when they couldn't, they couldn't get it when it was clear, but now when the clear smoke comes, when they can't see, they're in bewilderment, then they'll, on the Day of Judgment, they'll believe. When they're actually not really in a position to really make... Uh, those rational choices. And then Allah explains His Sunnah of sending prophets, taking them out of oppression through the example of the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay? So now maybe, how much time do I have? About 15 minutes. 15? Yeah. Okay. So maybe I'll go a little bit further. Huh? So Allah said, now, who were the people that were uh, oppressive? The people of Fir'aun. So Allah says, وَلَقَدْ إِخْتَرْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ 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 عَلَى
then Fir'aun was being oppressive to his arrogance. And he had what Allah called ni'matin, instead of ni'matin, like I mentioned. He had progress. Okay? But progress is not considered necessarily not based upon knowledge. But he had progress, and that progress of the oppressor became inherited by Bani Israel on the one side. Then on the other side, وَلَقَدْ إِخْتَرْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ We chose him, we chose meaning Bani Israel. وَلَقَدْ إِخْتَرْنَاهُ We chose them, meaning people of Bani Israel, for knowledge. Okay, over all of people. What was the knowledge that was given to them? Same thing that the surah is beginning. Knowledge is, as Ibrahim also mentions, Ya Abati, O my dear father. O my dear father, knowledge has come to me that hasn't come to you. That is ilm of wahi, ilm of revelation. And over here, in we chose them or oh, oh, because of their knowledge. Meaning what? Because of revelation, which is the beginning. Our sending down this revelation is the knowledge that will take you out of the situation that you are in into the state of harmony. You will again now notice with this idea, the story of Adam the angel says there's fasad. First point Allah makes, Adam has knowledge. Adam has the ability to receive knowledge, right? This is the first point. He has the ability to receive knowledge. Second point, Adam has the ruh in him, so the angels bow down to him. Third point, Allah says, I'm not putting him in earth, I'm putting him in Jannah. First, Allah puts him in Jannah first, so that he can understand who his enemies are. So, shaitan and this whole thing happens, and then Adam does repentance to Allah, then Allah says, okay, you go down, right? Then Allah says, we're going to send you our guidance. So, guidance and knowledge, these are interrelated. Anyway, so, over here is knowledge of revelation. So, we chose them over on over knowledge, over meaning with knowledge, over all of mankind. Meaning revelation. And we gave them many of our signs that were bala. Bala is ibtila. But ibtila, that's in the positive sense for ibtila. Like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ ابْتَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمْنَهُمْ If Allah gave ibtila to Ibrahim. Ibtila is generally used something, a, a difficulty that comes out with a positive result. Okay? Generally we mean it in lugha, in language it could mean bad or good. But generally in the Qur'an, ibtila means a difficulty that comes out with a positive result. Okay? So Allah says, وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ آيَاتِ مَا فِيهِ and we gave them our signs in which there was a test for them by which they were able to progress forward. They were able to be positive. Now this subject finishes about Musa here. That Allah tested them, He put them in bala, there was difficulty for them, there was ibtila for them, but they came out of it successful. In the same way, the people of Prophet Muhammad the companions of the Prophet are being told, you are in this ibtila, you are in this difficulty, and you will be the inheritors of this land in just a few years. So this is happening in Mecca, when the people were being oppressed, and just 10 years later, they became the inher Muslims became the inheritors of the land of Mecca, and it became an ibtila for them, where instead of failing the test, they passed the test, and they were then the people that were, uh, you can say, uh, the people that they were being oppressed, they were poor, and now they are leaders of mankind. This is the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, in relationship to the story of Musa ﷺ. Now, Allah mentions about the people of Mecca. They say, Indeed, all of you all, all of these people, they're saying what? In here, They say this is our death. They say our, we have only our first death. We have only our first death. This ayah has two meanings. I'm not going to go into the second meaning, which is actually more correct. I'm just translating how it's generally translated in the different tafasir also. 
in hiya illa mawtatun al-ula. They say there's only one death, which is our first death. Okay? وَمَا مَهْنُ بِمُنْشِرِينَ And we will not be raised up again. There's no day of judgment after this. There's only one life. فَأْتُوا بِآيَاتِنَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then if you are truthful in your claim, then bring, bring the proof, bring your signs. فَأْتُوا بِآيَاتِنَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ أَهُمْ خَيْرٌ أَمْ قَوْمُ تُبَّعُ Okay, now Allah says, that remember what we mentioned about Prophet Musa والسلام, and how the Sunnah of Allah is to send messengers. So Qawm al was an Arab, Arab civilization that God destroyed. But the Arabs at the time of the Prophet, they knew about them and they knew how they were so advanced in civilization and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did them, meaning finished them. So Allah says, أَهُمْ خَيْرٌ أَمْ قَوْمُ You think your Quraysh is better than Qawm al وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَوْلِهِمْ Or the people before them ثَمُودَ uh, And so on and so forth أَحْلَقْنَاهُمْ We destroyed them This is the Sunnah of Allah أَحْلَقْنَاهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا مُجْرِمِينَ Because they were criminals So this is the thing Allah takes Allah sends the Prophet So that the people will not be criminals So that people will be good people But if they don't listen to the Prophet Then they're criminals Because they didn't respond positively to the truth And because they're stuck in their ways They don't want to change they have their status quo, they have their interests in the system, they, they like things the way they are, they don't want to change, and they want the facade to continue. They continue with the mischief as it is. <laughs> and we didn't create whatever is in the heaven and the earth or whatever is between them just to, for plague. You think we made this just so you can create more facade, so that you can be mujrim? We made this world so you can work as criminals? No, we got rid of them. The sunnah until the time of the Prophet was, any nation that reaches its peak of corruption will be removed from the face of the earth. Okay, Allah will send them a messenger, the messenger will warn them, take them out of the situation that they're in, they will learn from the, 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 the evils that they were committing to become like, you know, some Muslim, He's done dating and alcohol and he understands, okay, we were in this situation. Now he, he appreciates Islam more. He appreciates the rules of Islam more. So you were in this situation, you should appreciate what the Prophet is bringing to you even more. But rather than that, you wanted to stick with your ways. You wanted to not change. And so you were, in, you were criminals and you were removed from the face of the world. So the other answer is that one is Allah removes the criminals from the face of the earth until the time of the and the second is to remove the criminals from the face of the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't punish anyone, Allah says, until we send a messenger. Okay? But now with Prophet Muhammad, it's a little bit different. Because now instead of Rasulu Mubin, instead of a Rasul who is clearly a messenger of Allah, it has to be Ummatul Mubin, you can say. The Ummah, the Muslim community, should be in such a position that it should be able to clearly show the truth as truth and false as false and clearly show what is justice, what is harmony, what is fair and good play and what is really, uh, you can say, a harmonious and a healthy society, a healthy person, healthy personalities in a healthy society. So they say in here, إِلَّا مَوْتَةَ الْأُولَى وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمُنْشِرِينَ There's only one death, meaning what? We, should, we can do whatever we want in life, we don't have to follow any rules, we don't have to care about justice and fair play and oppressing others, we just have to look at our own benefits. Now again emphasizing, one is we didn't create what is whatever we created for play. The other is we only created it for a just purpose. It has a purpose to life and creation and universe. All of this has a purpose. But most of them don't understand this. Now the surah, towards the end, I'm not going to finish, maybe I can quickly. How much time do I have? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Inshallah, I can do the... Uh, some ayahs from here. Inna yawm al-fasli bi'qadum ajma'in. Now the ending is simply 
the consequences. What you don't agree with the world, what will happen in the world? You don't believe that we sent our messenger to take you out of this oppression. You don't agree that we remove our the criminals from the face of the world. Okay, you don't you don't buy all that. You say that there's only one life. Okay, so then the the only thing that can be said. Okay, well think twice about it because. Now, Qur'an gives a very powerful word picture description of the hereafter, both the good and the bad. So just one last time, take a look at what you're really getting it yourself into, okay? So, إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْفَصْلِ مِقَادُهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Then definitely the day of judgment, the day of decision, is a, is a place where they will all meet together. Shayna, the day where no Mawla, no, you can, Mawla is, uh, you can say an insider, okay? There is, near, near, uh, you can say, near, Mawla is the insider agent. You know, if you're in a government, they're insiders, right? And then there is a power outside the government that can overtake the government. That's Nusra. Nusra is help from outside coming in. And Mawla or Wali, Wali or Mawla is the insider. He's the insider who can help give you some pleading, some shifa, some si si sifarish. So this is Mawla. Okay? So this is the difference between these two groups. <laughs> so here is Nusra and Mawla. Both. There, there is no help for them from the outside coming against Allah from the outside, nor do they have an insider in any way that they can somehow find their way, plead their way, you know, have inside contacts that can help them bargain their way out. That will not happen either. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِرَبْ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ Except for the ones Allah has mercy. Yes, the believers, they will find maybe through the prophets or maybe some righteous people or maybe some, some of their good deeds or maybe just through the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll find some way to plead their case for themselves and find their way to uh, to Jannah. Inna hu al Aziz al Rahim. Indeed, Allah is al Aziz. He will take revenge on that day, and He's Rahim. He will also forgive on that day. Inna shajarat al Zakum. Indeed, the shajar, the tree of Zakum. So this is a special tree that is in the hellfire. Ta'alum al Hathim. It is the food for the sinners. Okay, this is the food. Kalmuhi. يغلي في البطون كالغلي كالغلي صب كالغلي الحميم. So they will have you know this things that will burn their intestines and they will have this boiling water that they will drink that will burn them. صب فوق رأسه من عذاب الحميم and the boiling water will be thrown over their heads and it will burn them. زق إنك أنت العزيز الكريم. Now this is making fun of them. Taste, you criminals that were in the world didn't listen to my clear message, didn't listen to my clear prophet when he came trying to take you out of all of the oppression and facade that you were in. You didn't. Because why? You wanted to be what? You wanted to have that oppressive state so you can be called what? You can be called Al Aziz Al Karim in, in that time. In the earth, people used to call you noble person, right? And gentleman, and so on and so forth. There's a very interesting book, I'll say this very quickly. There's a very interesting book. Uh, it's called The Godfathers of Asia. The book is called The Godfathers of Asia. And what this author tries to do, he tries to look at the tycoons of Asia, how the billionaires of Thailand and Malaysia and Hong Kong, how they came about. And he says about them, all of these tycoons in, in Asia, they're not good businessmen. It's just that they had government contacts, they had they were able to bribe the people, they were able to take monopoly, and you know, this is how they made their business become bigger. This is, he was basically saying, his point of the book is that we're very fair here, and don't expect the same type of fairness back there. Which is, of course, that's not necessarily true. The point I'm trying to make is, that one of the points he made in his book is that people over there in Asia, the tycoons, they like to give themselves titles, you know, like even in, even in our uh, Islamic scholarship, we'd like to give ourselves titles. So he was talking about this syndrome that Eastern people have of about giving titles and so on and so forth. So anyway, 